Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day. Uh, now that that's out of the way, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And this is going to be the single most requested video I've had in the last week. So let me put on my plus five head of weaponsmithing. Work on skill on my crafting a little bit. Let's talk about it. Anyone who's been following my video comments for the last week knows I have probably had 25 or 30 requests from different people uh, to cover strap-on destinies. Now, 700-pound trap bar deadlift, uh, which he had done, I guess, like a 670 or 675 a few days before that hit a 700. He also did a slingshot 405 bench press. And people are saying, hey, Jason, that proves that he can crush the uh, numbers that you set out. That proves it, right? He's, he's way stronger than you thought he was. And again, I'm going to go back to my original point. No, it doesn't. I'm going to break it down for you guys. Uh, because no, it actually doesn't. What he is doing are just showboat exercises. They're not indicative of actual starting strength and having to move away through a full range of motion. And no, they actually are not proof that he could even meet the challenges I set out. Uh, now, the defense that's been laid out is that I think he's claiming, well, those would just be a warm-up for him. They would be easy. All of his fans who don't understand exercise science, who don't understand biomechanics, joint angle specificity, stuff like that, are saying, oh, he's right. You're wrong. No, because he can't do it. And he still hasn't done it now. The only way he's going to pull it off is if, since I made that challenge, he's been practicing it in secret and building the strength and not showing it on camera. But if that's what he's doing, it's going to take him a while to get there. Meaning he's going to need at least a month, maybe two months, to even reach the strength standards I set out. And people are going to say, how can that be? He's lifted all of this weight on these exercises. They can't be that different to where he's losing that much strength. You're wrong. I'm going to break it down for you guys. All right, anyone who watched his slingshot bench press, everyone's saying there's no way a slingshot adds two plates. Really, Dan Green would disagree. Uh, you guys see the article Dan Green wrote on using a slingshot? Dan Green, one of the best coaches out there, a raw world powerlifting record holder. Okay, the 242 world record holder. He says the slingshot on average uh, for a strong lifter should have 50 to 100 pounds. That's how much more weight you should be able to add to your bench press while using the slingshot. 50 to 100 pounds. Now, people are going to say, but, well, he might be closer to the 50 pound mark. I think he can do 365. I think he can do 350. I don't because I've never seen him pause bench. He doesn't practice the pause bench. Everything he does is bounce, touch and go, lifts his ass off the bench. He can't bench 315 meet legal. There's no way. I very seriously doubt he could bench 315 for one rep, for one rep that would actually count meet legal uh, at any federation I'm aware of. He doesn't pause bench. Even his slingshot wasn't a pause. And what do I mean it's not a pause? Uh, because he never broke up the eccentric concentric chain. That's the whole point. You remove the stretch reflex when you break up the eccentric concentric chain. And now he loves to quote uh, Louis Simmons and discuss West Side stuff, right? Then let's discuss that. Louis Simmons talks a lot about breaking up the eccentric concentric chain. Talks a lot about stretch reflex. He's not breaking it up. Therefore, he's allowing himself to get the stretch reflex out of the bottom from accelerating down with that weight. All right, that gives him more pop off the chest with the slingshot possibly taking 80, 90, 100 pounds off the bar at the bottom, probably at least 100 to be fair. At least 100 pounds is coming off the bottom minimum. And then he's able to use that stretch reflex to get it out of the bottom. When he did his 300 or whatever it was for three reps on camera, whatever, a year ago, two years ago, those were bouncing off his chest. Those weren't meat legal. His ass was coming off the bench to help him get the weight moving faster out of the bottom and he bounced it. There's a hell of a lot of difference between doing 315 for a triple with that technique and doing 300 and actually coming to a stop for one rep. It's actually harder to do the 300 from a dead stop, keeping your butt on the bench. It's actually more difficult than to do three reps the way they were done. And that's why I said that. And the reason I'm saying this stuff, guys, there are standards put in place for strength standards so that everyone can compare. And if people break outside those strength standards, yeah, they might be able to lift tremendously more weight than other people they're being compared to. But if you put them to the same benchmark and they have to use the same method, same technique to lift a weight, sometimes you're, they're going to be weaker than you think they are. He uses trick lifts, trick lifts uh, to show that he's lifting a lot more weight than he would really be capable of doing if he did these to the standard it is required in any sort of uh, competition to where everyone has to use uh, the same methodology so you can really compare their strength. Uh, and the other thing is, 
when we would go back to the thing with the slingshot, the 50 to 100 pounds, okay, why am I saying it's going to be at the 100 pound mark instead of the 50? Because that's the range. People are saying, well, what about a 500 pound bencher? That might be who's going to get the 100 pounds. The difference is he doesn't train the bottom of the bench, all right? He doesn't train the bottom of the bench press at all. He doesn't do pause work. Uh, he does purely accommodating resistance and partials. He isn't going to have strength out of the bottom. And even if he had done the 315 touch and go or bouncing before, your strength doesn't carry over from all that stuff that he's doing. Um, people need to understand that. If you get stronger and stronger on the reverse band or the slingshot and you haven't used raw dead weight off your chest, let's say you've started with a 300 pound bench, you do a 350 slingshot or a 350 reverse band bench, bench press, right? And then you build it up to 400 and you spend several months building it up to 400, but you don't ever do normal pause bench off your chest. When you come back to the pause bench, your pause bench will most likely not only stay the same, it will very possibly go down. Your 300 might turn into 290, it might turn into 285. Carryover only happens within 15 degrees of where you train a joint. So if you exclusively train the bottom 20 degrees of the shoulder with less weight and less volume than you previously did, you will get no carryover from that middle range stuff that you're doing or the lockout that's heavier. You're not going to get carryover to the bottom in terms of your joint angle specificity. You will get weaker. You will get weaker out of the bottom. You'll get weaker out of the bottom. And inherently, you have to change uh, the way you're doing stuff because normally your max is pause at the bottom. Let's say you could pause bench 300 at the bottom and then you bench it up using accommodating resistance it's going to actually be a harder rep if you had a full 300 at the bottom if you have a heavier weight at the lockout. So it's actually going to be more difficult. You're going to have to adjust your accommodating resistance to where the bottom is actually normal, nor, uh, weaker than where your normal would be. So the fact that he only trains accommodating resistance, the slingshot could actually be adding upwards of 100 or more pounds to what he could actually pause bench legitimately. The only time I've seen him ever pause bench was the clip where he did 295 off of a pin press at the bottom. And I'd venture to say that that means that his max in a true pause bench press is probably no more than about 300 pounds. It could be more, but not very much more. It's going to be real close to that. All right, that's just the reality. That's basic biomechanics. You guys have been tricked with showmanship lifts that make you think the guy is stronger than he is. All right, it's a gimmick. It's a gimmick he uses to market himself. Nothing more. It's a trick. It's fake. Uh, the trap bar. A lot of people aren't understanding. He's not doing the trap bar deadlift. They're like, what? He's doing a high handle trap bar deadlift. There's a big difference between the two. You see those trap bars, those higher handles? You can flip it over and do the normal handles, and that will put you at the same range of motion a normal deadlift will. Now, most people, even at, with the low handles, are stronger with the trap bar. For example, do you guys recall when I did a trap bar deadlift once or twice on camera when I was messing with some west side style training? When I was using the conjugate method back when I was training a little bit for single ply? Uh, what was my max deadlift right around then? I was still rebuilding from being sick. I hadn't done any meets really again. Um, I was deadlifting, what, about 550 at that time was my max? You guys remember the first time I did a high handle trap bar? With no straps or anything, I walked over and pulled five, uh, 600 pounds. I pulled 600 pounds clean easily with the low handles. That was 50 pounds over my max, and it was easier. And you know, I, I said that at the time I made the video, that it's easier to grip with the side grips than it is to grip in the front, okay? A trap bar, even with, with smooth and no knurling on it, is easier to grip due to the hand position than a normal barbell is. So your grip strength is gonna be a lot better. You're gonna be able to lift a lot more weight even with your grip. Uh, due to the mechanics of it and the offsetting of the bar, you're at a better leverage advantage. Your muscles do not have to work as hard in the bottom half of the movement, okay? So that means you're going to be able to accelerate a trap bar off the floor better. You're going to be able to get better leg drive. You're going to get better mechanical advantage due to your bones. Due to the position of your bones, you're going to get better mechanical advantage. It's not uncommon for guys to lift 30, 40, 50 pounds more. Uh, with the low handle trap bar versus their conventional. And I was training conventional and I easily walked in and pulled for, for not even a max 600 uh, on camera when I only had my max deadlift around 550, so about 50 pounds. All right, he's using the high handles. They're about five, maybe six inches higher. He's cutting five to six inches out of the bottom of the range of motion. The trap bar is already easier to break off the floor. 
the bottom of the deadlift is the most difficult. The bottom two to three inches is the most difficult part of the movement. He's removing that by using the high handles. He's a short guy who trains a lot of lockout strength. All right, he already trains partials. He already trains the trap bar. He already trains the trap bar. He doesn't do any normal work off the floor anymore. He doesn't do deficit work anymore. Doesn't do normal pulling off the floor from a normal height, even using the low handles on the trap bars. He's demonstrating the range of motion in which he has built all of his strength up. So, pulling 700 with a high handle trap bar using straps, or doing 10 reps on it with straps, or without straps, uh, but with the, the side handles isn't indicative of being able to pull 500 for reps on a conventional barbell off the floor for full range of motion. You guys got to keep in mind, he's already short. Therefore, the hardest part of the range of motion is smaller for him. He has a lower center of gravity. He's closer to the bottom. He's removing another five to six inches of the bottom of the range of motion with an easier biomechanical position. Literally, with his structure, it is possible he might only be a 500-pound deadlifter using no straps, using a conventional stance, and using an Olympic barbell from the floor for the full range of motion. He literally might have a max of 500, but then hits a max of 700 on the high-handle trap bar with the straps and everything. It's a totally different exercise, and they are that far apart. Uh, and yeah, I've seen guys who do high handle trap bar for over 700 pounds who are not 600 pound deadlifters. All right, there's plenty of footage out there because the trap bars are used a lot by field athletes. Look at training footage of football players. Uh, go look at Joe DeFranco's guys. Look at some of the guys there who are trap bar deadlifting seven, 800 pounds, sometimes for reps with the high handles. And then go look at what they deadlift, okay? Again, it's an exercise that has its place for certain types of athletes, but it is not a comparable standard to the conventional deadlift. It isn't comparable. You should be able to lift a lot more weight on it. I don't just mean 30 or 40 pounds. It should be a lot more, 100, 200, 250. Depends on the person. Uh, so again, it's not indicative at all. It's just not indicative that he can meet the challenges, and that's what people need to understand. I set those challenges for a reason because I know he quit doing conventional training, therefore he doesn't have conventional strength. And he didn't quit doing conventional training because it's boring. He quit doing conventional training because he knows he could do more showmanship with the style of stuff he's doing. And a lot of naive people who don't understand biomechanics that they don't understand the real comparisons are really going to think that he's a lot stronger than he is and they're going to attribute it to his training methods. No, it's the fact he, he just trains with uh, reverse bands, with accommodating resistance, with partials, with everything else. That's the reason he's strong in those strong ranges of motion. Everyone is stronger in those ranges of motion. And if that's all you train, that's where all your strength is going to be. And it's not going to carry over to normal lifts. It's not going to carry over the way that people think it will. It doesn't. And I know this from observing other people. I know it from having done this stuff myself. It doesn't transfer. So when people are saying, hey, you know, he could easily do those numbers, I can't believe you say he can't, I'm still saying he can't. And if he could do it, if he could have done it at the time that I said that, he would have gone to the gym and just done it, just to prove that he's a badass who could do it without doing any special training for it. So what he's going to end up doing, if he does it at all, he's going to take five weeks, six weeks, eight weeks to actually get strong enough to do them because he doesn't train any of those exercises that way. He doesn't do normal training. Uh, in order to hopefully be able to do it. Then he might do it and say, oh, I could do it all along, but that's going to be lie. That's going to be a lie because the way he trains and with what he lifts on those exercises, it isn't going to transfer. He can't actually lift the weights that I said he could on normal exercises. And he says he could do it as a warm-up. If that was true, he would have done it on camera already just to try to shut me up. All right, he would have already done it if he could do it. He might be able to do it in the future, but he can't do it last week. I promise you that. And no amount of subterfuge, no amount of redirecting away from that, no amount of show-off exercises proves that he can do it because he can't. And it's that simple. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.